update to my parents getting my brother a car on his 18th birthday and not mine. Original post. Okay, I know the title sounds like I'm spoiled, but hear me out. My brother 20 got a car for his 18th birthday. Not a new car or anything. It was a 20-year-old Lexus that was in a pretty good shape. And he rubbed it in my face for the rest of the time he was in senior year of high school. Compared with my brother, I get just as good of grades as he does. Better in some cases even. I worked my hardest in the hope of fairness. I even did some volunteering cleaning up garbage in my local area. Then my 18th birthday came and went a few weeks ago. And the only thing I wanted, the only thing I was hoping for, was a car. I wasn't expecting something like a new car or a sporty car. Just something reliable like my brother got. My party wasn't even anything like my brother's 18th. For his 18th, my mom baked the cake herself. It was a delicious layered chocolate pudding cake, while I got a sheet cake from the supermarket. For his, they got a DJ. For mine, it was my dad's old boombox with a couple of mixed CDs. We went through the whole party and I figured my parents might have just been waiting to spring a surprise gift on me. But that didn't happen. I asked them as things were wrapping up why there was no car when my brother got one. And they said that they felt like he had worked harder for it. I asked what he did that I didn't do, because I did all of that and more. My grandma was nearby and heard everything. And then she asked them why as well. She ended up lecturing my parents that she was very, very, very disappointed in them for showing favoritism. Then she proceeded to announce to everyone still there that my parents thought it's fine to get their firstborn son a car and DJ but not their second. And then she even pointed out how much harder my parents tried for my brother's 18th birthday than they had for mine. My uncle was the first to stand up and say something. Then everyone else who'd not left yet. I ended up just walking away and going to my room to sit and think. I got a few I'm sorry calls from my relatives and my grandparents convinced me to go out with them for the evening. But when I got back, my parents were angry and told me I'd shamed them for the whole family. I just walked past them because I didn't want to fight. The next few weeks went by with a silent treatment between us. But then a few days ago, my parents suddenly surprised me with the white 98 Subaru Legacy that runs great. They practically threw the keys and the title in an envelope at me and said to have fun. I got the car and they're paying for the insurance for the next six months like they did for my brother. I know a car isn't really a right, but a privilege. So I feel like I've essentially blackmailed my parents into getting me one. Am I the a-haul for how all this played out? Edit. I would like to clarify a few things. My parents make pretty good money. And also don't go out of their way to live lavishly by choice. They've always been moderate in everything they buy or do. Though if anything is stretching their finances, it's my brother's college tuition. He got a partial scholarship and my parents are paying the rest. I don't. I never intended to ask for the same treatment on that. I want to work and pay my own student loans. Now that I have the car, I'm already looking into getting a part-time job. This also isn't a gender thing as I'm male like my brother. The bill of sale for the car I got says my parents paid $1,600 for it. My brother's car cost them about $30,000 plus, if I remember correctly. But I don't see it as a money issue. I actually really loved a Subaru and told my parents so, though they did not share my enthusiasm. I also did try to talk about a car with my parents a few times last year, but they always dodged the conversations about the topic. I figured if I talked about it too much, it would ruin it. And so I stopped. I would have felt like a brat to keep talking about getting an imaginary car. So I learned to just stay silent and hope. I can't go stay with my grandparents because they live in a one-bedroom condo. There isn't enough room for other people. After all their kids grew up, my grandparents decided to downsize to make their eventual retirement easier. Also, my grandparents know all of the details already. And they tell me that I didn't do anything wrong. And we're already planning on confronting my parents quietly over the car issue. But they took the chance to take care of the matter when they heard me asking my parents about it. As for my brother's 18th birthday party, it was held in 2020 during basically the height of the pandemic. Honestly, we shouldn't have had a big party like that at a time. But my parents insisted. As for my brother himself, he barely speaks to me even before he left for college. He didn't show up for my 18th birthday party. And I figured that's just because he's busy with college and he's not even in the same state as us anymore. Honestly, I haven't seen or heard from him since Christmas, but even then, the most I got out of him was a mild greeting. I did thank my parents for the car. Enthusiastically thanked them even, but they've barely said a word to me after giving me the Subaru. And when I thanked my parents, they brushed me off and just went inside. It kind of gave off the vibe that they were letting a brat play with his new toy, which was pretty upsetting. 
and one of the reasons I made this post. There was one more thing I forgot to say. I was really hoping to get the car because I literally couldn't get a part-time job without one. We don't live in a city, and we're 10 miles from the nearest public bus stop. I've always had to get rides to go anywhere. Now that I have the Subaru, I intend to look for a part-time after-school job as soon as I can. Since it came up in so many messages, I want to clarify that when I went to talk to my parents after the party, it wasn't in front of the rest of the family. I intentionally spoke with them in another room and was supposed to be out of earshot of everyone else there. But my grandma eavesdropped and then barged in to start lecturing my parents about their actions. And that's what caused a crap storm to start. Now for the top comments before reading the update. You come across as a good kid. I'm gonna say not the whole 95%, a little bit a hollish 5%. Doing it in front of people wasn't great. I tried to keep my conversation about a car with my parents private. Had my grandma not been listening in, then that blowout with family wouldn't have happened there. When I was talking with my parents, we were in another room. Either way, it doesn't matter because the other people in my family noticed how little effort my parents put in compared to my brother's 18th, and were ready to ream them over it later. In the end, I probably would have gotten the car the same way, whether or not my grandma made a scene that day, because she was ready to call my parents out as unfair at any time. Not day home. But just out of curiosity, did they always show him favoritism? It was pretty fair and even when we were little, but it just slowly started to happen over time. And I guess since my brother was the first to be a phage, they just focused everything on him. Not they home. The way they got called out by the whole family is hilarious. They're mad they got caught. Good on you, OP. You just know the parents were ready to revise history and downplay all of OP's accomplishments. But grandma didn't let them. Go, Grandma. It's so satisfying to see how the rest of the family stepped in to set things straight. OP, your parents were showing obvious favoritism. This isn't Cinderella. They got named and shamed in front of the whole family as they deserve. Please, don't let this shake your confidence in yourself. You worked hard. And even if your parents refuse to see it, you will meet so many people in your life that will love, appreciate, and respect the effort you put in. Be kind to yourself, OP. You were not the whole. Now, 40 updates 6 months later. I've not logged onto this account in roughly 5 months. So now I can tell you all the rest of what happened before college starts. But before that, there are some things I want to get out of the way from previous commenters and messengers. I literally needed a car because there was no way for me to get a job without one. I had no personal transportation and live over 10 miles from the nearest bus stop. So, for those who kept telling me to give the car back because they think I was either too spoiled and to accept life is unfair, or that I shouldn't take handouts, or I shouldn't accept gifts from crappy parents, etc., please just stop. My inbox was so crammed full when I logged back on that it took some time to go through it all. It doesn't really matter anyway, though. I did get a part-time job that later went full-time for the summer after I graduated. But three weeks into working part-time, the Subaru blew the head gasket while on the highway at like 45 miles an hour. The temp gauge redlined, and I had to pull over and call for help. My grandparents took a look at the car and found that someone had ran a lot of gasket sealer in it, and it was still in the coolant. The car was basically band-aided back together before my parents bought it, and was then barely hanging on by a thread. It drove great, and I was never pushing the car hard as I'm kind of a slow driver. My parents claimed no prior knowledge of the problem, but their only real reaction was to shrug and say it was karma for making them get me the car in the first place. Well, that was a mistake because my grandparents were right there to witness that. They tore into my parents like none other. My grandma told me to go wait in my room and let them sort this out. It was two hours before I was called back into the living room. My parents were on the couch and both looked like they'd both been metaphorically hit by a truck. My uncle and two other relatives were there now too. My grandparents had gotten it out of them, that when they bought the car, they just looked for the cheapest thing they could find close in the area that still ran, and bought it no questions asked. They didn't even bother to inspect the car, let alone properly read the ad for it. My uncle, who knows a thing or two about cars, told me that the engine would basically need to be rebuilt because the head gasket warped at the block, and it would cost more than the car worth to fix it. I had to call into work and tell them I wasn't able to make it in because my car was dead. They understood and basically put me on a sort of unpaid leave for the moment. Now, I want to point out that what happens next I had no involvement with. My grandparents just told me to chill for a while and let them and my parents take care of this. And they did. A few days later, they came back with a 1999 Honda Civic hatchback with 180,000 miles on it. 
It was white like my Subaru was and drives great. It's not all-wheel drive like the Subaru was, but it's great on the road and gets better gas mileage. There was also a list of all recent repairs done to the car, things like a new radiator and stuff. My uncle also went over the car before giving it the okay. I thanked everyone profusely. My parents, though, had all the elation of Ben Stein and Valium. They said very little and just walked away. There wasn't even that vibe they had last time of acting like they were giving a new toy to a brat. If I could put it to words, the way they acted was just pure defeat. The Subaru got resold later for $400 since that was the best we could get for it with a blown head gasket, and that money was put into my savings. That's only half of what happened though. You see, when I said I did better in school than my brother, I wasn't kidding. My brother got a 30% scholarship after he finished high school. Well, I got a 50% one. Not at the same college, of course, but at one comparably good that was also closer. To say my parents were shocked is an understatement. Of course, they just both looked unhappy as soon as the shock wore off. I decided it wouldn't be a good idea to poke the bear by asking them about it, but my grandma thought otherwise and poked that bear. And I mean really poked it. First, she asked if my parents were happy for me, and they claimed they were, but really didn't show in their attitudes. So my grandparents finally asked what their problem was. Why do they dislike me? Their second son was doing great and even went above expectations. And they can't be happy about it? Did they want me to fail? Were they hoping I'd fail? What is the deal? My mother looked really upset and my father couldn't look me in the eyes. They both meekly said they were happy for me and managed to say they want me to take the world by storm when I go to college. And even said they'll help pay some of my tuition as well, just like they're doing for my brother. My grandparents both sharply said that they'd better keep their word because there should never have been any favoritism, period. I thanked my parents for their help, got a light if not limp handshake from my father and a very stiff hug from my mother. It all felt so forced. I was and still am extremely thankful for the car and the tuition, but my parents just drained a room of all emotion. I ended up asking if my grandparents knew what it was that made my parents act this way. I asked if I was an accidental pregnancy or something, and they gave me the it's time we told you look. Well, I'm not adopted like so many ask, but I wasn't planned. Sort of. You see, my parents wanted both a girl and a boy, but got two boys instead. My brother came out as a boy, so my parents were really hoping to get a girl on the next go, and they had a prior agreement to stop after two kids. They never got a girl. My grandma told me they refused to find out my gender until after I was born. They were convinced I'd be born female, and they'd bought a lot of baby stuff for a girl, and they didn't get a girl. My grandma said I ended up using all of my brother's hand-me-downs till I was three years old because my parents had bought so much girl stuff in advance that they couldn't use. So, I was just a disappointment to them from the time I was born. My grandparents said that they know my parents are screwed up but they've been the way they are for so long now that there's no point in expecting them to change. Since then, my parents hadn't spoken to me much about college. In fact, they ignored the subject as much as they can. And thanks to some of the warnings I got from people who messaged me making me paranoid, I called the college I've been accepted to and made sure to tell them that if anyone calls or emails pretending to be me, or if my parents call trying to say I'm not coming, then to call me for a double or even triple check if anything like that happens. I mean, I kind of doubt my parents would do that sort of thing, especially after everything that's happened. But I felt like playing it safe was the better option. Though there was something that I really didn't expect to happen, and that was my brother calling me. He called me out of the blue to talk. He said our grandparents called him and told him everything. He told me he was sorry for what happened in his own way, and he hopes that once I'm on my own, I won't need to ever come back. He actually admitted to me that when he finishes college, he is going to stay in the state he's in because he likes it there. Our parents I do know actually really want him to come back when he gets his degree, but it looks like that's not happening. I said I don't blame him and I may do the same. The rest of the conversation was a bit awkward because we aren't really used to speaking to each other much anymore. My grandparents and the rest of the family held a surprise party for me over the weekend, and they made it almost like a repeat of my brother's 18th birthday. There was a DJ and a big chocolate cake my grandma made. I couldn't thank them all enough. My parents attended the party but they were like wallflowers the entire time. They didn't say or do much just stayed sitting at a far table in the corner and drank beer quietly. The look of defeat they had was even greater now. I think the party wasn't just to congratulate me, but to also rub in my parents' faces that they should have done better. Because the rest of the family have made their disappointment in them very clear. 
They seemed like they wanted to leave the party for a while. Can't say I blame them. They were being humiliated into staying where they were, while my grandma said that you're never too old to be taught a lesson in humility. As for my personal life, a part-time job went to full-time after high school, and I've been working hard to build my savings before I leave for college. I made minimum wage, but a job is a job, and I want to leave it with my best efforts put in before my two weeks' notice are up. I doubt I'm gonna be coming back here to make another update. And after my first post, I'm just so tired of all the negative comments. About 95% of the comments in my original post were positive, and I want to thank all of those who had nice things to say. You people rock. But the negative comments were so bad that I found it to be mentally draining. Some of the people who commented such negativity honestly feel like they've got worse issues than me. Lots of projecting, maybe. If anyone had something harsh but constructive to say, that was fine. But some people just raged at me like they were foaming at the mouth. I really don't want more of that. This is a bittersweet update. I'm so glad your family's rallying around you. This is how you deserve to be treated. You've achieved so much and you should be celebrated. Your parents? Well, they have to deal with their own mess. I hope they think long and hard about how terrible they've been. I hope your college experience is amazing. Bittersweet is an apt description of how it panned out, but I'm glad the rest of my family had my back. Hopefully knowing the history will help you move on. Thanks for coming back. Grandma's awesome. And so is the rest of your family. So glad that you have their support. Congratulations to you. Grandma finally had a chance to do to these people what she had watched them to do when Opie was growing up and could do little about. Way to go, Grandma.